court is about justice. And then I got you testing positive July the 24th and July the 25th for coke. Offenders are scolded. Stop the coke. But in this court, they are also encouraged. Good luck. Hang in there. And they're applauded. Welcome to our program. This is one of our state's drug treatment courts. I think the drug court is a positive thing for our community. These courts offer drug addicted defendants treatment instead of punishment. The idea was it would be cheaper than warehousing people in prisons. This treatment cost a small fraction of incarceration. It saves money, period. But the legislature cut state funding to drug treatment courts. We can only spend the money we have. Drug treatment court supporters say it makes no sense to cut a program that saves the state money. Don't just think about, in the short run, cost savings. You know, think about the long term. The long term costs of putting drug addicts behind bars and the long term benefits of lifting them out of addiction. Sometimes redemption comes in a squad car and sometimes it comes in a drug court. Law enforcement officers are rounding up more than 100 suspected drug dealers in Person County. Been picked up. Say out of our 110 today, yeah. I would say it's probably as high as 75, 80 percent of those will be repeat offenders. It's a reflection of the community's drug problem. We don't have the users, then the dealers don't have the business. And all the drug use contributes to other crime in the community. Say if you got a high rate of um, breaking and entering going on in a community, well, a large amount of the people doing the breaking and enterings are doing it to support a drug habit. Ninety percent of the crimes that are committed in Person County, we can relate them one way or another to drugs. Most of the drug addicted criminals are familiar faces to law enforcement officers and court officials. We arrest them, we carry them to the courts, and they do their sentence and they're right back on the street. I have been personally been a part of arresting the same people five to ten times um, for some of the same offenses. Calvin Harris was a classic example. I started using drugs at the age of 16. You know, I kept using marijuana, I kept drinking, and started using a little cocaine. And I guess it was about 84, 85 was the first time I ever experienced crack cocaine. We would catch him sometime and he'd have I mean, some drugs on him. Uh, we would bring him down, and then he would pull his time and he would be back out on the street. Over the course of 30 years, Harris racked up more than 75 charges. Many crimes were clearly to get money, things like breaking and entering, larceny, safe cracking, and obtaining property by false pretense. I always committed crimes to get high just one more time. You know, I just, I just wanted to get high. Harris has been in prison five times. He spent almost a third of his adult life behind bars. I never could really put the two together that the reason why I would become homeless, the reason why I was going in and out of the penitentiary was because of drugs. You know, I just thought that that was part of life because I had seen so many other people go in and out. You know, I was just caught up in denial and um, I just didn't see it. Corrections officials say about 63% of the inmates coming into our state's prisons need substance abuse treatment. Typically, we're able to meet about 25% of that demand. So 75% of prison inmates who need treatment don't get it because of the Department of Corrections' limited treatment budget. And some inmates who do need treatment choose not to get it. As much as we would like everyone that we think needs substance abuse treatment to get it when we're ready, oftentimes the participant is not ready. Inmates who leave prison without treatment are more likely to return to the behaviors that got them into prison in the first place. A lot of times prison will make them a better criminal. If they're ever going to stay out of jail or prison, they're going to need more than jail or prison to keep the habit. I think everybody on the team is just so incredibly proud of you. Next, how our state's drug treatment courts can break that cycle of crime by breaking the cycle of addiction that fuels so much of it. I'm clean today for 14 months and seven days. And, and drug court has saved my life. Sean Burnett, come forward, please, sir. A session of drug treatment court in Orange County begins. 
All right, so drug court family, if you'll come around, properly introduce yourself, followed by the staff. Bruce Mabry greets Sean Burnett. Burnett is just entering drug treatment court. Mabry is about to graduate. And Mr. Mabry has 361 days substance free time. Mabry has been in drug treatment court for just over a year. When I hear you read this story, my thoughts are, how is he still standing here? Mabry's story began in fifth grade when he first started using drugs. Curious, seeing other other kids my age doing it, stuff like that, and I mean, just just started experimenting. First with alcohol and marijuana, by 17 he had graduated to cocaine and prescription drugs. Was doing doing things like to get the money, basically just about anything that I could do to support my habit at the time. Bruce Mabry? He was facing prison again for a probation violation. His probation officers suggested he go to drug treatment court. If you choose not to do what they ask you to do, then they send you back to jail. Mabry says his choice was the most important one of his life. Yes, it's hard, but if, to do the things you want to do, you have to make sacrifices. Sean Burnett. Sean Burnett is now trying to make those sacrifices too. Mr. Burnett has six days substance free time. Burnett was just convicted of his second DWI. Well, my sentence was 45 days in either county jail or treatment program. I think I chose here because I think if I'd have went to jail, I'd just sit in there and stewed and been mad and then just came right back out and tried to catch up for lost time. Burnett knew it was time to stop drinking. Not only putting myself in danger, but I mean, I could kill somebody else drinking and driving and I'd have to live with that the rest of my life. And, I couldn't, I don't think I could do that. So he just opted into the program last four session. Burnett's success depends on him, but there is a team of people supporting him. In drug treatment court, we all have the common goal, which is to get these folks in recovery and get them to complete the program. For a while, he was still testing positive for cocaine, but as of August 3rd, he tested negative. The team consists of a drug treatment court coordinator, a judge, probation officer, assistant district attorney, defense attorney, and treatment provider. He's already connected with treatment and he's attending treatment groups, correct? The team will help make sure Burnett does what he's supposed to do. I'm Sean with Drug Treatment Court. So how long you been in drug court now? Six, seven weeks next time we go back. Burnett must attend substance abuse treatment meetings three times a week. And I've seen yourself start to develop into some things, whereas you know, you're staying clean. He must meet with a caseworker at least once a week. We'll go ahead and do a drug test on you. He must submit to random drug tests. The test did come out negative. He must do 50 hours of community service. And he must obey a curfew. Yep, we'll see you next time. All right, OK. We start off with a ton of structure. And then as we go along in the program, then that's reduced. And hopefully, they can learn how to create their own structure. So yeah. that's the reward for success. The punishment for failure, such as missing meetings or failing a drug test, can be jail time. The model is uh, to, to, to retain a punitive aspect to it, a carrot and a stick approach, so that there are very quick sanctions for sliding backwards, and then of course rewards for uh, dealing with the issue. The ultimate carrot is completion of the program. The ultimate stick is termination. That means serving the original jail time or prison sentence an offender was facing before being offered drug treatment court as an option. I'm going to issue an order for arrest, 5,000 cash or secured. These first couple weeks it's been a little overwhelming, but it seems like once you get in your pattern and you know what you got to do, I think it'll just flow right along. Ms. Gardner has 386 days substance free time. In this courtroom, offenders are applauded. I'm very proud of you. How are you doing? They are encouraged. Good. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help because that's what we all have to do. And sometimes they're treated like children being lectured by a parent. It's not going to be easy, okay? All right. And I'm going to be on your back if I need to be. First time I ever heard people clapping in court and smiles on everybody's faces, so that was a big shock. 147 days substance free time. They're giving you hope and they're you're cheering for yourself, but they're also cheering for you too. I think that if people realize that we're looking at them more than just a criminal, then they would be more apt to 
try to do what they need to do. I do what I should have been doing all this other time, you know, like working a job, you know, um, and uh, paying my bills on time, you know, and um, just taking care of my life the way it should be taken care of, you know, opposed to destroying it. Presented to Bruce Mabry for successfully completing the Cary Program Adult Drug Treatment Court this 20th day of August 2012. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. At his graduation from Drug Treatment Court, Bruce Mabry told his story. Had a two gram a day heroin habit along with cocaine. Time after time, I tried and I tried, but always ending the same result. Me destroying my life and the people that really care about me. Drug court had given me the push that I really needed, the push that I was looking for, and it wasn't a push back into prison. Life has uh, a new meaning to me. You know, I have a sense of purpose now. Next, trying to make sense of our legislature's cuts to the drug treatment court program. Why does it make sense to cut funding for a program like that that can save the state so much money? The object here is to keep you out of the criminal justice system. We North Carolina's legislature established drug treatment courts in 1995. There are 34 across the state, in addition to other problem-solving courts, including DWI and family courts. They were created in response to the increasing number of drug-addicted offenders entering the criminal justice system. The idea was it would be cheaper than warehousing people in prisons, which was which was becoming a problem. Uh, we're trying to keep you out of the criminal process. It's hard to calculate exactly how much it costs to put someone through the year-long drug treatment court program because it's part of the overall court system, and so is most of its staff. But it's safe to say that it is a small fraction of the average $28,000 a year it costs to keep someone in prison. I don't think anyone says that this does not, in the long run, save money. Even though only about 40% of offenders successfully complete drug treatment court, that's about the same success rate as other treatment programs. Drug of choice is alcohol. There is a huge cost savings related to having folks complete the program, no matter if it's 40% or 30%, it's a cost savings involved. If the 180 people who successfully graduated from adult drug treatment court in North Carolina last year had gone to prison instead, it would have cost the state over $5 million in just one year. There are other savings in Medicaid and other human service programs, and some studies have shown that drug treatment courts can reduce crime by as much as 35%. I think the true value comes if you talk to anyone who's been through that program and has turned their lives around, restored their family, raising their children, have a job with money. How can you put a price on that? The voice of the majority decides. But the $2 million price tag in state funding to drug treatment courts was too much for legislative leaders. In 2011, they cut those funds, which eliminated 33 drug treatment court coordinators and managers. That forced the closure of five courts and forced others to cut caseloads. Leo Daughtry is chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, an appropriations subcommittee on justice and public safety. It is tough times, and we did have to uh, make some tough decisions, and one of them was to eliminate administrators in the drug courts. Daughtry blames the slow recovery from the Great Recession. Legislative leaders also targeted programs that aren't statewide. I think that that became a, an arbitrary criteria that the public could accept, uh, that the General Assembly could apply. Mecklenburg County, 16 years ago, implemented a drug treatment court. Policy. Some local governments decided to make up for the state cuts. Mecklenburg County commissioners voted to cover the loss in state funding. Their county was first in the state to have a drug treatment court. If the state is unwilling to meet this need, and we recognize this as a, a significant, substantial need in our community, then we as a county have a responsibility to do what we can to try to address that concern. All in favor say aye. aye. As an attorney and former assistant prosecutor, Commission Chairman Cogdell was disappointed by the state cuts. Sometimes we can make um, short-sighted decisions and uh, end up paying more in the long run. So when you buy cocaine, does that end up 
helping your rent or not helping your rent. Some counties funding drug treatment courts while others don't may violate our state constitution. It calls for a unified court system that promises equal justice under the law in every county. To allow the court to, be, to return to the county funding stream uh, does compromise the unified court system in a fundamental way. I think that the initial plan um, when I came on board back in 2003 was very much to be able to grow treatment courts across the state and that it was the state's responsibility. I'd like to have them in every county in North Carolina and as soon as we get the money to do that uh, we will certainly expand them but right now we don't have the money to expand them. Check in to N.A. or to A.A. on a weekly basis. Judge Mark Galloway is the chief district court judge in Person County. He presides over the county's drug treatment court. He wants legislators to find the money. Now I'm asking them to go back, revisit that choice. He points out that at least three of North Carolina's neighboring states with fiscally conservative governors and legislatures have supported expansion of drug treatment courts. When a drug court in Person County prevents a pregnant, addicted woman from delivering a crack baby. We save money for the whole state. You spend the money on the front end to save millions and sometimes billions of dollars on the back end. And it's, um, I would love to see North Carolina take that similar stance. When I was uh, using the way that I was, um, the drugs were in control. Next, what Calvin Harris's story says about the impact of drug treatment courts. I always believe in giving someone a second chance. If you want to watch this documentary again or learn more about it and drug treatment courts, visit WREL.com and type WREL Doc in the search box. Remember Calvin Harris? He was in and out of jail and prison for 30 years. In 2005, he was facing more charges, including a charge as a habitual felon. That was the second time I had been indicted as a habitual felon. I was facing 11 years. All right. He was given the option of drug treatment court instead. And I knew that was my way to get out of jail. But the judge kept sending him back to jail because he kept failing drug tests. I don't know, something happened. You know, something happened and I, and I just got tired. You know, I got tired of that lifestyle. I got tired of going back and forth to jail, um, just using, it wasn't working anymore. You know, it just seemed like when I was using, I was just pouring pain in me. You know, whatever I did, it, it just didn't work. Harris considered suicide, but decided to give treatment another try. Once I wanted some help, they were willing to help. How are you doing? Doing okay? Well, good. Well, Harris says encouragement from Judge Mark Galloway helped a lot. I came from a broken place. You know, I came from a world of irresponsibility and unmanageability. So for someone to tell me that I'm doing well meant a lot to me because of my self-esteem was just so low. Was you good at Miss Stanfield's baby? He graduated from drug treatment court in 2006, and he's been clean ever since. Kathy, what do you want me to do with these pallets? With the help from Judge Galloway and a prison after care program, Harris got a job at Spuntech. It's a manufacturing company in Roxboro. Well, we do look at the background, um, but we also look at where he's been since. I really thought he needed a chance, and, and he's performed. I became a responsible individual, and I was able to pay back uh, for the things that I did. You know, I was able to pay my restitution and lawyer's fees and, and uh, damage that I did to other people's property. Harris got married and gained custody of his granddaughter. You know, I wasn't employable. It wasn't that I couldn't get a job. I couldn't keep a job. And he gives back by telling his story to other ex-offenders who are struggling to rebuild their lives. I needed that help to be uh, a productive member of society. You know, to stop being a burden to my family and stop being a burden to the taxpayer. You know, because um, when I'm in prison, the taxpayer got to support me. As taxpayers, we also support drug-affected babies born to drug-addicted mothers through millions of dollars in Medicaid. And we support law enforcement officers, paying them to arrest the same people for the same crimes over and over again. Anytime you can cure an addict, 
you have a, uh, an impact that goes far beyond what's happening in courtrooms. Legislative leaders who argue that economic growth is needed to boost tax revenue to expand programs like drug treatment courts may also want to consider the drain on our economy and our tax-funded resources caused by people stuck in the cycle of addiction and crime who have so few opportunities for help. We all need help, you know, and that's just the help that I needed. It does work because, you know, I'm a living example, you know, what's possible. It's been a long, long time, long time coming, but I know. Thank <laughs> you.